How important is Florida Bay to our ecosystem? It's uh, the Florida Keys. The entirety of it? Yeah, it's, 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 it rules Florida Keys. Uh, and a lot of people aren't aware of that because you don't see Florida Bay from the highway. Yeah. You go down the highway, you go to Key West, you go back and forth, but unless you spend a little time and know the interaction, then it's not that we're environmentalists. I mean, environmental, you're an environmentalist. Yeah. I like to fish, I yeah. like to swim, <laughs> I like to be on the water, you know, and I drink water, so um, I want to protect it. Does that make me an environmentalist? Yeah, I guess so. Snakebite, Roscoe, Buchanan, Catfish. These aren't characters in a movie, but another kind of drama. They are among the many keys, bays, and basins that comprise Florida Bay. The fang-shaped body of water between the southern edge of Florida and the Florida Keys. 800 square miles of epic, and one of the most important stories in sport fishing today. To the number crunchers, Florida Bay carries the financial impact of a small nation bringing billions of fishing and recreational dollars into the state's economy. To the anglers, it's a saltwater theme park, sandy flats, seagrass beds, muddy banks, and blue water that hold everything from bonefish to billfish. But the water has been changing, and now man and nature must work together to fix it. That's an unpredictable partnership. Both are capable of miracles and disasters. But a few days in Isla Mirada is a reminder that we have no choice. Getting it right is the only option. You can talk about what's happening topside in the Florida Keys. Sure, there are cool hotels, and good seafood, and great people. But this is the Isla Mirada you're looking for. Intimate and expansive. Wild and still. Zen and adrenaline. Roughly halfway through the Florida Keys, Isla Mirada includes six islands with a population of 6,000. If the traffic on US-1 isn't bad, you can make it from Miami to Isla Mirada in an hour and a half. This is where sport fishing was born. Sight fishing, backcountry fishing, saltwater fly fishing, all of them rooted in these waters. It's been alleged that Isla Mirada has the highest density of professional offshore charter boats and tournament captains in the world. We couldn't confirm this. The day we planned to take our own pole, everyone was out fishing. For a proper portrait of the Florida Bay fishery, ask Captain Richard Black, the man behind Blackfly Charters. He grew up in the Upper Keys and got his captain's license at age 17. There's a few places in the world that you can go and say, let's go bonefish, and yeah. if that's not working, or you catch one, you can say, well, let's go catch a redfish in a snook, or tomorrow we can go sailfish. Yeah. That's the cool part about Isla Mirada, is a lot of options. His family is equally entrenched in this world. His wife, Brooke, works for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, a nonprofit based in South Florida. His father-in-law is Captain Dave Denker, a guide and local legend who has fished Florida Bay since the late 60s. But your whole family's in the fishing industry, right? They are. It's nice to have a, a, a family that we all have the same, same kind of values. Awesome, and we can yeah. share the same experience. When you sight fish as often as Richard, it's hard to ignore the changes. The fresh water out of Lake Okeechobee and the Everglades is essential to Florida Bay's brackish balance. As man took a greater role in managing and appropriating that water flow, less and less of it has reached the Keys. As a result, 
the hypersalinity is killing seagrass and making parts of the bay uninhabitable. The grass dies and we really don't have any algae blooms. And then all of a sudden, kind of creates a perfect storm of all the dead grass. And then the algae blooms start. And then you get a three to four year stretch of algae blooms where the grass doesn't get a chance to grow back. In that time period, the algae reached Isla Mirada, so. It's a lot of algae. A lot of algae. Even with some 50,000 acres impacted by the water quality, the fishing is still strong. It's still capable of jacking your heart rate. That is to say, it's still very Isla Mirada. Richard suggests a pit stop at the tackle center of Isla Mirada before we head out for the day. A casual conversation about fishing spots with owner Donnie Lang leads to talk about the health of Florida Bay. You know, some people might say, well, there's more people fishing, there's more pressure in areas, and that may be true, but that's not the main problem because when we were fishing back in here, when I was guiding, there would be 20 boats drifting in that bay, yeah. and everybody was catching them, and 90% of the fish were turned loose, but I don't think that that was we were wiping the area out by any means. A little bit before last summer, a couple areas in the bites in some of these bays got three times saltier than seawater. It choked out the grass and that started to die. And it started killing this area. And then it would die, float up, sink out. Kill that area. Kill yeah. this area. So it's, it's just marching out slowly. It's totally dead. Now that we're armed and ready, let's go over the checklist. The Yeti Rambler is a cooler in the palm of your hand. Even on a summer day in the Keys, the ice stays all day. Florida Bay's diversity means fly, spin, or conventional, and they're all options. Penn's variety of rods and reels have us covered. Costa sunglasses have nearly indestructible frames and scratch-proof lenses that provide 100% polarization to see the fish in the water. The next level of technology behind spider wire superline, fluorocarbon, and monofilament means less breakoffs. Yellowfin 17 Skiff. Isla Mirada's skinny water requires a boat with minimal draft. On board, Simrad Electronics can combine a chart plotter, broadband sonar, and HD structure scan in one touchscreen unit. Powered by a Mercury 115 Pro XS, the lightweight, high-powered outboard lets you stay versatile in the flats. Forget the skin mounts. King Sailfish Mounts creates beautiful fiberglass reproductions that support the sport's growing catch and release efforts. The Guy Harvey Outpost Islander Resort is home base for our little adventure. The 25-acre, 139-unit resort has accommodations both Oceanside and Bayside. We opt for the Bayside townhomes, just a short walk from the boat slip. Let's go. All right, let's go. It's right here. There's two of them right here. Bring it quick, 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 quick. I got him, I got him. Easy. Oh, here they are. Take now. Okay. They're on. Guys. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. Good job, Cap. These guys here all year? No, they start showing up in the summer. We have more singles and smaller groups in the wintertime. These guys gonna move off and spawn somewhere else, I'm assuming? Yeah, well, kind of the estuary of redfish, so this would be a nearing fully grown yeah. flamingo size, and then if they get any bigger than that, then they start going out and doing their thing out in the golf. There's a bunch in that school. Yeah, that was a nice school. There's a 
snook swimming away. Okay, hang, get ready to make a cast over in here. Okay, I got him. Right here. Down give me a toss uh, about 30 feet out, just to the right of my push pole. Hold your rod to the left real fast. Right now, little twitches. Twitch, twitch, twitch. The agent, hit him. Good job. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> They're hungry. Now bring them over here. Nice. Hook right in the top. It's a nice Florida Bay snook. Catch them up on the flat. It's fun size. That's your bread and butter right there. Perfect. Real aggressive. You know. He was starving. They see it. They're gonna bite. Away he goes. Thank you, sir. Snook are like the gummy bears of the flats. Yeah, they, they're real easy to, for sharks to bite right through. The scales are soft. Right on cue, the gummy bears attract shadows to the flats. It's time to switch gears and up the challenge. We're going after sharks on fly. The lemon shark is a loner, so the fact that there are a group of them means the ruckus in the shallow water has attracted plenty of attention. It's 90 degrees with a thick haze overhead. Wind is minimal and the water is calm. It's a new moon, so the ebb and flow of the spring tide is significant. There's about a half a dozen sharks back there on that dark patch. Yeah. There's about seven of them right there. I know, there's, they're yeah. back there. Master. Doing donuts. Ouch. Got my own blood in there. Yeah. There's bait in the water. Yeah. There's sharks in the water. There's a couple bulls in there. We'll make them happy. Got it. This one's coming in pretty hot. Let's drop it there. Let it sink. Just strip real easy. Real easy. Strip. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, you hit him. Let him go, let him run, let him run, let him run. Good job. Aggression <laughs> came up and hammered it. Yeah. You see him tracking oh, behind yeah, yeah. it? Oh yeah, he was on that boom. one. Boom. Think there's a few of them out there? There's on this few. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be pretty tired by the time he gets yeah. them in. Oh! Ah! Oh. Wanna take a whack at it? Yeah, I'll give it a try. Come on, buddy. Thanks. Show me how to do it. Hardly ever get the chance. Okay. Fire it up. Let's shake and bake. Yeah, buddy. That'll wake you up. That's a big shark, though. Yeah. There'll be bruises from this one. The reel's actually hot. When you lift up on the dorsal like this, they just like, they just go numb. Yeah. They're paisley design on their head. It's so cool. All the dots. All the dots. Is that yeah. just all sensories? All sensories. Show me your teeth. These guys are a big part of the system too, aren't they? They are, they're very important. Without sharks, and the, the whole ecosystem crashes. And they're such a fun game fish. You can't talk fly fishing in Isla Mirada without talking about Florida Keys Outfitters which has provided fly fishing instruction and equipment for a quarter century. Founder Sandy Moret has been fishing Florida Bay for 40 years and understands the water quality situation as well as anyone. Florida has a disaster with its uh, water management. It's, uh, uh, it's a continuing thing. After the hurricanes in the 1920s, they built a dam around the southern edge of uh, Lake Okeechobee, uh, which choked off the river of grass. Rainy season, 
the lake would overflow and the water would come down through uh, the river of grass and out into Florida Bay, which was a natural, unique estuary. In reality now is we've got a blockage. Same thing as if you had a blockage in your aorta, it needs a stent. It needs to set a stent to allow the water to start flowing again. The water quality issue isn't just all about fishing. It's about the entire Keys way of life. Angler and artist Tim Borski lives that life. His artwork is inspired by local seascape. Inside his home, son Joseph ties flies. Outside, even with another neighborhood in sight, Tim's property has an almost Amazonian exotic feel. Almost nobody is killing tarpon in the world today on purpose. But there will never be any more tarpon in this world than there are today because we're killing them at their nurseries where we're going to be tonight. We're killing them through development. On a late night swamp walk, the ecosystem is in full bloom. This is what starts everything right here. How close is that to my driveway? 150 yards? The Florida Bay food chain is born and nurtured in shin-deep shallows like this one. We can't afford to lose them. These fish are a billion dollar industry and their elusiveness only adds to the allure. With bonefish, you gotta be less angler and more ghost hunter. There are a lot of voices in the Florida Bay debate. Anglers, citizens, politicians, government officials. But if there's going to be any real progress, conservationists must take an active role as well. Jennifer Rahaj is an associate professor at Florida International University's Southeast Environmental Research Center. Today, she and her team are conducting field research on the water salinity and how it's impacted the fish population. Our objective is to understand how changes in hydrology to even more freshwater flow are going to affect fish. We are doing tagging to track adult use, also some saining so that we can look at juveniles and look at prey abundance. The big question is how good of a sort of prey habitat is this area for fish to come in and will that change as they get fresher? One of the biggest challenges for Jennifer is the lack of historical data on the subject. It's hard to track improvement if you don't know where you started. When we had the seagrass die off in 87, there was no data being collected, and that's like the last major dramatic event that happened to the bay. The seagrass beds in Florida Bay are the largest sort of contiguous seagrass beds in the world. Bonefish, arguably the most popular species in Florida Bay. Every year, bonefish sport fishing contributes $1 billion to the Florida economy, according to a study by the University of Miami. Screaming. That breaks down to approximately $3,000 per fish. Life on a bonefish, yes, sir. Despite the current water issues and the bonefish's elusive nature, the water is alive. It's like each small swell is haunted by the gray ghost. Yep. Ready for it. Bonefish congregate in and on the flats, using the tides to their advantage. At low tide, they hang near the shallow edges, conserving energy. At high tide, they move onto the grassy flats that aren't as readily accessible. Bonefish demand a stealthy approach and an accurate cast delivered just far enough ahead to avoid spooking them. 
Well, I'm pin clipping them for BTT. It's a, a genetic study that they're doing. It doesn't harm the fish at all. And you just take a little bit of their, their fin there, like about a quarter inch, and that grows back just like your fingernail. We're trying to figure out where our bonefish come from. So whether they come from here or the Bahamas or Mexico. So everybody's fin clipping all over the Caribbean. Curious to see how the project turns out. The stillness of this place belies the symphony of discord coming from anglers, lawmakers, and environmentalists. Public outcry over Florida Bay is only growing. The newspapers are publishing hostile op-eds. The hashtag SendWaterSouth and SaveTheBay have gained momentum on social media. In August 2016, a plan was approved to move an additional 6.5 billion gallons of freshwater per year to Florida Bay. Activists say that's not enough. Some Florida legislators are pushing for a $2.4 billion land purchase. It would create 60,000 acres of clean water storage for the Everglades. Whatever the answer, it has to be significant. A garden hose can't pretend to be Niagara Falls. Meaningful action is needed now because Florida Bay isn't just this. It's this. And this. And this. Whatever it takes, for as long as it takes, the Battle of Florida Bay marches on.